So I, I wanted to talk about a concept that I've been reading about in a book by Julia Christava. It's called uh, The Powers of Horror, An Essay on Abjection. Okay, so that's abjection, A-B-J-E-C-T-I-O-N. Okay, and she she zoomed in on this word because what it means is what it means rejection eject uh, it also means you know hopeless like when we say uh, in that area there was abject crime or abject poverty abject behavior we mean the worst kind of hopeless messed up stuff okay um, and it also means that you know you kind of have an aversion okay and um, it comes from the idea of there is what we call the body proper which is like the pure body the pure the, the idea of pure and then we have what is the impure and the unclean and so Julia Kristeva explains that abjection, the abject, is neither a subject nor an object. It's the me that is not me. So what does she mean by that? She means that if we think of bodily fluids and, you know, we, we eject them from our body and we're kind of, you know, grossed out by them, generally speaking, especially, I think, around the time that she wrote this book, I know, I, th I can't remember the, the time where she's wrote the book, I'd have to have a look at the date, but what comes to mind is like the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, and um, you know, people were very afraid of bodily fluids, you know, it was a big thing. So that's like, you know, what she associates the abjects with is like bodily fluids that come from the body, and it full, you know, it, it's out of the body, and you say that's me, but it's not me. Okay. Uh, and another thing that she explains is that it's it's how we define ourselves. We define ourselves by what we are not, and that this ends up leading to to quite a bad habit, because the a, a properly functioning ego will be able to relate to an object. So to each object its ego and to each abject its super ego and so what she what she means by this is that a functioning uh, ego kind of you know has has its desires and drives and values kind of set straight it knows what it wants it's aiming for something it, you have a sense of self but through this constantly defining ourselves by what we are not, we never end up focusing on what it is that we want to do. It's always what we know we shouldn't do, what we, what we ought not to do because of cultural norms. And that's why she links it to the superego because the superego is all about cultural rules and etiquette and manners and, you know, and so, when she says it's the me that is not me it's when we kind of say that disgusts me that is perverted there is a perversion i see that as a perversion and i i have an aversion to that thing over there keep it away from me that's disgusting and that kind of defines you as the pure and that over there as the impure, the body improper. You're the body, you've got this idea of the body proper. So this is why, again, it's related to the superego because the superego is like the self ideal. Okay. And so basically what, what she unravels by playing around with this word is that it's, it's basically what starts racism bullying it, it's everything it's it's also how we end up separating ourselves as individuals from the father figure and the mother figure and she uses this dynamic of the oedipus complex to explain that we we as a society in liminal space which is kind of the ritual that leads to you know your rank and role in a social group 
um, that's what li that's what the liminal space is. It's the bit just before we've kind of ordered where you fit into a group and what that group is. There's a ritual. She explains that abjection rests within this ritual. Um, and take, for example, her parents have no problem with, say, the milk on, uh, you know, the, the skin that forms on milk. Uh, they proffer, you know, about this. That They say, oh, it'll be okay, you know, don't worry about it. Whereas... Chris Davis says this disgusts her, you know, and she, so right there she, she separates herself through this abjection from the mother and the father, um, through this perversion and aversion to something, and so she, she notices that this is something that's, that's kind of before the symbolic order and, and the forming of narcissism, which is kind of like a, a protective mechanism of the psyche um, that kind of, uh, when it doesn't know what to do, when it doesn't know how to respond to the environment, we become kind of narcissistic. We, we put up this kind of mirror of ourselves of what ought to be, but we don't really have a sense of ourselves. Okay, and we see it in others, and then we start meddling in other people's affairs. We come, we become a bit fucking snobby, and this is where she's saying that, you know, through defining what I am not, the me that's not me, I'm not really thinking about me. I'm just in this narcissistic kind of mirror phase. You know, I'm just kind of stuck in this phase, and so yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing that she zooms in on she she discovers a whole psycho psychology in the way that we use this word the abject and she finds that the, there's something it's beyond like the symbolic order the way that we use language to find our way in the world um, it's kind of you know revealed through horror perversion and aversion to things and it's it's how we 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 form in, in groups but we kind of only become part of the herd through saying what we're not this is what forms tribalism you know uh, we we become snobby and we just you know form groups that are kind of you know quite easy to form because they're just popular consensus popular opinions etc Okay, and she, she defines this as, as the way in which we overcome the, the fragmentation in the modern age, in a way. You know, how, one way in which we try to overcome alienation, given our experience in, in modern times. And I guess she, she's making, you know, I, I, I found it useful for explaining things like bullying you know, um, that people kind of start judging other people because they, they, they're not satisfied with what they want, they don't know what they want, and when you don't know what you want, you haven't really got a sense of, of your own self. When you're just stuck in the they self, the opinions of other people and, and society, then you, you're not really making an effort, you know. I mean, you can have people agree with you all day that that over there that we consider to be perverted you know is is bad or whatever you know but it's it's kind of lazy you know you know you by constantly defining what you are not you're not defining what you want you're not really looking at yourself you're stuck in this mirror phase of confusing other people with your own internal world, you know, and this is why she says it's neither subject nor object. It sort of sits in the middle of the object-subject relation. Okay, it, it's kind of like where you don't, you, there's a, a blurred boundary all of a sudden. There's a, a you know, we, we're not aware of the boundary anymore. And it's kind of delusional what she, what she finds in there. And so, you know, with the, the black pigeon speaks guy, he's your typical, like, guy who's using this abjection, you know, and he's just not aware of it. He thinks he's got these opinions of his own and, and that he knows what he's talking about when he doesn't. All he's doing is just abjecting. He's saying, 
that over there is wrong because it's not what I think it should be. That's a classic objection. That's rejecting something because it's not what you consider to be the pure idea of it. So that's me, that's the me that's not me. You know, that's blatant abjection and it's what starts bullying, bigotry, racism, sexism. It's, it's, it's behind them all. And Julia Kristeva is a feminist as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a really interesting word to use. You know, it kind of deconstructs a lot of shit that people talk. You know, I, I'd, I'd been looking for this word, you know, because it, this is part of the, the, the quest of philosophy, I find, especially with, like, these, these structuralist philosophers. They, they are discovering something that's been going on in this complex emergence that we're in. And it, it's not like they're inventing an idea. They are discovering what's been going on. So, for instance, like, the the alphabet and, and language, you know, we were using this stuff long before it was actually written down and long before people actually started to study the symbols to understand what they mean and, and, and to evolve them. So, you know, the, there are interactions that go on in the world with, between people that we, we haven't yet defined through language and abjection is one of those words that when you hear it, you're like, yeah, that's how it works. That's how these, you know. And, and it comes down to this, I think, with abjection. I think that when you don't have a sense of yourself and you're not defining what it is that you want, you're just saying what you shouldn't do, what, what, what you are not, and you're judging people all the time, telling them what they ought and ought not to do, um, you know, you're not living your life, basically. You know, you're not actually experiencing anything. You're just sort of, you know, you're just joining the herd, the group. And to blame the media for trying to ram things that are different down your throat, that's, that's you admitting that you, you want them to spoon feed all the answers to you. You want them to give you all the answers. And when they don't, when they don't do that, you blame them. You blame other people for not doing the hard work for you. You know, that's the result of abjection, of constantly rejecting others, okay? And, and you've got no idea, you know, it, it destroys empathy. You've got no idea what it's like to be an outcast. And that when, when you look at people in a relative way and if you actually spoke to say a lesbian gay or bi or trans person you would see that no they're not mentally ill no they're not mad they're not you know because when you say things like that you, you you're coming across it comes across as compassionate but you can hear the the rasp of spite and pity in there and it's fucking insulting and um, and we can see, those who you abject can see when you're just being a fucking snob, man, and you want to get over yourself, you know, you, you really think that, like, we're going to find you attractive or, you know, do you, you really think that someone who's gay is going to be so hot for you and you want to tell them how bad it is that they're gay and, and you don't want to catch their gay, you know, so that's why you say that they're ill. So then you can you can you can turn them into the bug in Kafka's, you know, metamorphosis and lock them away in a room out the way because it's an embarrassment. You don't know what to do with it. You know, you've got to accept your part of the responsibility and human affectations and relationships here, okay? Because it's a two-way street, okay. Uh, the the other person is performing it is is being in a way that you see as ambiguous and they can explain why and how or whatever it is you want to know if you ask them about it but if you don't even try to understand and you and you go to these opinions that are just it's just abjection okay um 
then you're not understanding. And underst and this is what I was saying about like the alphabet and language and, and this weird abjection. There's always something in the background in our experience and it's called understanding. Okay, and the way that we interpret reality comes from this understanding. And so when you explain that transgender people are ill, you're showing your understanding, your limited understanding of this subject. Well, you're not even touching the subject and you're certainly not being objective, you're being abjective. You're just rejecting it. You've got this presupposition that if somebody dresses differently, there's something wrong with them. So ever lightly, you know, you, you're stuck in this circular reasoning. It's circular, it's fallacious. It's not just that you're being insulting and a dick. It's the fact that you are being circular in the way that you're thinking about this. Transgender people are ill because transgender people are ill because and so on and so on, okay? It's really not like that. If you actually spoke to a transgender person who's been through the surgery, who's been, you know, living for 20 years after the surgery or whatever, or 10 or five or even a year after, and, you know, be long before that they were dressing up as, as a woman or a man if they were a woman, you know, and they're in a relationship, they've got a job, they've got things that they want just like you and we all want things, we all want different things. So the ego always seeks an object, but all you've got is this abject. You've just got this super ego thing. And you'll see that when you talk to these people in those positions, you'll see that they're not mad. They're, they're, they're not delusional, they're not sick. They're happy. And what's wrong with that? Okay. And, and then, you know, you, you, but you just come back and say, yeah, but they, they cut their bits off and oh, they, why did they do that? Well, then don't fucking expose yourself to something that you don't like. Why do you keep looking for it then? If it really bothers you that much, fine, you know, but just have a bit of tolerance. And tolerance means not caring. It just means don't care about it. Don't worry about it. It's not happening to you. You're not going to catch being gay. You're not going to catch being uh, transsexual. You either are or you aren't. There's no other way to explain this to people who don't want to understand. And we can t I can tell when people don't want to understand when they're just playing into their, you know, they're arguing from incredulity and ignorance. They don't want to accept something about it. And that, but that's their problem. That's your problem. That's all you. That's got nothing to do with me or anyone else, how you think and feel. And this is where abjection blurs that boundary between you and the other. You can't tell when you can't tell that other people are different to you, that they want different things, that they speak differently to you. But of course, when we all just say what we're not, and we come together through murder, as Julia Kristeva explains, you know, we, we murder somebody, we, we, we outcast them, we push them out, and then we all come together with our, our own little club of sworn to secrecy, to make sure that that person um, hasn't got any phone numbers or whatever to, to get back in touch with the group that's come together through the murder. Okay, the murder of, of this person, the one who is abjected. Okay, but when, when you do that, okay, you're not, you're not developing a sense of yourself and this is where this narcissistic mirror stage, you know, you just end up stuck in it. Now, can you tell me that you're living your life by being that way, by just telling people what you don't like? Well, what do you like? You know, what, what do you want? Because all you keep saying is what other people should want, you know, and, and that you've got these standards of what other people ought to do. 
but we never hear what it is that you are about you know and it's because you don't know you don't know how to express that and that's the problem here that's the problem that people like Black Pigeon Speaks has got and, and other bigots and um, you know morons okay and I'm abjecting here we all do it and this is what makes it so true we all abject it's it's kind of inescapable it's a universal mode of action through language we 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 have aversions to things okay but just being aware of it and what damage it can cause mainly to the one who's doing the abjection all the time without you know knowing that they're doing it it has a detrimental effect on the way that that person can express themselves because it gets to the point where those who come together through murder they have so many rules and they have to watch what they say all the time that it gets to the point where you can't you can't say anything you can't do anything it's like the gestapo all of a sudden and this is what you know chris Deva gets at this is it's such a powerful word that she's found because it's how tribalism and racism and bullying it's how it works and the way to break the cycle is to focus on what it is that we want okay to to understand ourselves a little better and to understand the other and understanding ourselves and and understand and getting more of a sense of who we are we then naturally begin to understand the other when we understand what it's like to want to do something that other people don't like that other people don't accept but we also know that there's nothing wrong with it either that it's just what we want to do that there are times where you've got to be selfish there are times where you've just got to be who you are because if you don't you'll regret it for the rest of your life you know you'll feel like shit that you're lying to yourself okay and just one last thing I mean I put it on the th this isn't so much related to objection but this is definitely an objective kind of argument that they've got they're saying that transgender is the same as being anorexic and it just isn't one anorexia is a psychosis it's a delusion okay that person thinks that they're fat when really they're thin and they're starving themselves to death so what they're doing has no good outcome it has no out excuse me it has no outcome that is going to benefit them or anyone else okay they're going to die if they don't eat so that's the first thing remember put it into context that anorexics are starving themselves to fucking death which is not the same as feeling that you're somebody else to the way that you the rest of your body looks the way that you are determined by biology but you're also determined in personality that there's something called an ego a sense of self we all have this sense of self and some people they're more aware of how they are very different to the way that they look or you know it's it's not a delusion okay because you can't really offer evidence to say you know that the ego isn't a substance that you can pull out and say look see I told you you were a man you were you were a woman all along you know if they were the same sex you can't do that you know there are quite clearly a lot of men and women for that matter who express personality characteristics of the opposite sex and when they have the surgery they fit right into that body it is possible it does happen you know and and just not accepting that is just an argument from incredulity and personal ignorance 
okay it's not this it's really not the same as anorexia it's not a mental illness anorexia is um, one of the umbrella terms that comes out of body dysmorphic disorder okay but um, transsexuality is part of a diagnosis that's not really an illness it's not an illness it's gender dysphoria okay now note how it doesn't say disorder and it's not psychotic you know why would they inv why would they why would psychiatrists have this term called gender dysphoria when what you are saying for anorexia nervosa which is a psychotic uh, disorder okay part of body uh, body dysmorphic disorder okay why would they not if if transgender people are the same as anorexics then it would come under body dysmorphic disorder but it doesn't it comes under gender dysphoria which is sorted out when that person takes steps to be more like how they feel on the inside and when they do that they're not killing themselves they're not suffering it's not leading to something bad anorexia leads to bad shit it rots your fucking ovaries etc okay so just get that out of your head and stop being so objective okay and, and insulting and just understand when you're not being understanding when you're just playing to you know personal incredulity okay i've got to go um because i'm running out of storage okay talk to you soon bye